Hi, I'm Cheryl Ann Webster, creator of the Beautiful Women Project, and in this set of tutorials, I will teach you how to create a plaster cast of a beautiful body. Part one, preparations. Let's go over a few of the preparations so that you can have the best casting session possible. A few things to consider when you're choosing the space in which you're going to do the casting. You need enough space to be able to move around your castee with ease. And it's also easier on the castee if there's a light or at least a lot of airflow because it can feel a little tiny claustrophobic once the plaster layers go on. And if this is your first time, it may take you a little longer than expected. So just making sure everybody's comfortable and has that space to breathe. Although a bathroom or kitchen anywhere with hard surfaces is easier to clean up, you might find a living room, dining room or bedroom a bigger space to work in. If you're working in a room where there's soft furnishings or a carpet, even good hardwood floor, it's great to put a drop sheet down. I highly recommend an old bed sheet, paint sheets, that kind of thing. Tarpauling and plastic can work, but it can also be a little slippery, especially with the water that's going to possibly drop from your hands and from your castee. It's also good to get your supplies ready ahead of time. That way the poor castee isn't sitting there with hardly any clothes on while you prepare the plaster. But don't get it ready too soon. So if you get it ready a week ahead of time, then the plaster may pick up moisture from the room or from the outside. So there's a fine line between being ready in time and not ready so early that you mess up the plaster. So this is what I do. I use a plastic tub to keep my plaster in that I've already pre-cut. I do it the night before and I cut it outside so any plaster dust doesn't get into my living room space. Now, of course, here in the film studio, that's a little tricky. So I'm not gonna cut too much here. I, you're just gonna have to fill in the gaps yourself. Now, you may have bought your plaster bandage from an arts and crafts store or a medical supply store. There'll be a slight difference in the grade of the plaster. Naturally, medical grade plaster bandage is the best. It's a much finer gauze and really, really yummy plaster. However, Arts and Craft Plaster does the trick as well. I don't know what your bandage is going to come in. It could be a thicker roll, it could be a shorter roll. But from now on, the process is the same. When you unwrap it, be careful of the plaster dust. Open it over a garbage can so the dust can fall in and make sure there's plenty of air in the room. Thing you don't want to do is breathe this dust in. Plaster dust needs moisture to become Plaster Paris and set, so you don't want to breathe that in and have it set in your lungs. Now I'm not here to scare you, so don't worry too much, but just take note that you want to keep all this dust as safe as you can and away from your lungs and nostrils as best as you can. You're going to need a pair of scissors. They don't need to be that sharp, but you do need to know that the plaster bandage blunts them. So if you've gone into grandma's absolute bestest scissors that she uses for making wonderful garments, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Don't use your kitchen scissors, don't use your fabric scissors, just even if you have to, go out and buy a pair of cheap scissors that you don't mind destroying. They won't cut very nicely later on. They also, as you can tell, get a little bit of plaster on them. But the big thing is, we will blunt them. I'm just going to do a little bit here because we're in a studio space. Unroll your plaster again, tap it over a garbage can to get rid of the dust. Unroll it to a length that you feel you can manage. Now I've been doing body cast for a long time so I can work with quite a wide sheet of plaster but you may want to also cut it up the middle to make it narrower. Just cut it like you would a piece of paper and you'll see there all that plaster coming off. Once you've got your plaster strip, put it into a plastic container so you don't get uh, humidity on it and you don't drip water in it. You'll see in the actual casting tutorial that you can cut these into smaller pieces for certain areas like around the nipple in the belly button or if there's any repairs need to do. And when you get more experienced with it, you can also fold the plaster it's a little easier to manage and you get double the thickness on there, but that's only when you're a bit more experienced. 
Next thing up is the barrier. Now, the barrier is very important. <laughs> Depending on who you're casting, they're going to really want you to know this information. So the barrier is what we put on the skin of the castee before we apply the plaster bandages. The barrier protects the skin and it also acts as a release agent so the plaster comes off with ease. Now you know why it's so important. If you're working with a man who has a very hairy chest, you're going to need a lot more barrier than I'm going to be using in the tutorial. You'll have to base that. Between you and I, whenever we cast men, we always steal a couple of hairs. There's no way there's enough barrier to save all the hairs, but you don't have to tell them that. Okay. So let's talk barrier or release agent. It's one of the same thing. I'm not sponsored by these guys, but I tell you, these are my favorite. I trust them completely. So this is the original Vaseline. And I've tried no name brands and sadly the person got a rash. I have tried all kinds of other ideas like olive oil and coconut oil, different release agents and barriers. None of them work as well as Vaseline. And as this may be your first time doing a casting, don't try anything else. Go straight for this guy because this is the one we can trust. So far, nobody's come out in a rash and everybody has had the cast release with ease. This is also the unscented one and it's a 50 grand tube. You can buy this tube and you won't need all of it at all, but that's okay. It's a lot better to have more than get part way through and realize, oops, didn't have enough. I recommend you use the Vaseline obviously on your castee. You'll see in the tutorial how that's gonna go on. You can leave them to put all the Vaseline on and then you're just gonna check, ideally under a bright light, that there's enough. So if they're shiny enough, they've got enough on. I also recommend that you put some on your hands before you do the casting and on your feet if you're working barefoot like I tend to. It just helps the plaster come off in the cleanup. Otherwise, you'll have it stuck to your nails for a couple of days and it'll just drive you nuts. So just use it, put it on your feet, put it on their feet, put it on your hands. You can put this stuff anywhere. It's brilliant. Plaster doesn't like it, so it just resists it. And if you're doing a plaster cast of a pregnant woman who's eight months or more, this midline is going to be hotter than the rest of her body. So there, even once she's shiny, add another layer of Vaseline right there. As you do the plaster cast, if you're working down and you're getting to that area, add more Vaseline even during the casting before you cover up. Now, don't worry, it's not that she's going to get stuck in the plaster cast, but it will just be much more comfortable for her if you've got this really good covering of Vaseline that hasn't melted due to her body heat that pops straight off. So it's that midline there when somebody's eight months and above, it just gets extra hot. I don't know why, but if you know, you can drop me a line and let me know. So you've got the room prepared. You know you're going to use Vaseline. I will take you through the steps in the tutorial of how you're actually going to do the cast, but we've got a bit more prep and a little practice ahead of time. You know you've got the right scissors and you know you've got your plaster strips cut and in your plastic box ready to go. Next thing and the last thing before you jump straight into that casting is practicing dipping the plaster extracting some of the moisture but leaving enough plaster paris on there for it to actually work that may sound complicated but let me show you what i mean you can use any recyclable container at the end of it we are going to dispose the yucky plaster that's residual in the bottom and then we're going to recycle the container so i have a couple here to show you there's another one just make sure they're clean you know nothing nasty in there when you start and because I'm only going to show you a little bit, I've just got a small yogurt pot. The big ice cream containers are ideal because it's like a little bucket, but they're nice and flexible enough that when your plaster sludge at the end of the day is set, you can crunch the box, not the box, crunch the pot a little and slide the block of icky plaster sludge out and recycle it with ease. So here's the plaster strip. You're going to hold it with these two fingers at one corner and your thumb and other finger here. How do you explain that? I do not know, but this is what you're gonna do. Hold it like this. It takes some practice, but you'll get there. You may have your other te own technique, but if you hold in the middle and you dip it, it's gonna fold and crush. So what you're trying to do is hold it out tight. 
So dip the plaster in and I'll show you just how fast you dip it. Straight in, straight out. Now it's dripping like crazy as you can see and we don't want that. We want some of the moisture off. So with these two fingers, we're going to very gently just go down the sides like that. And you'll see it's no longer dripping or not dripping very much, but I haven't removed any of the plaster from the gauze and it's now wet and ready to lay onto your castee's body. That's the perfect one. If you hold it in the middle, it's gonna fold in on itself. And if you try and unfold that, it'll drive you and the poor castee crazy. So don't do that. If you're dipping with two hands, the problem is now what do you do to get some of the moisture off? So you can lay it onto the body soaking wet and dripping. It's just gonna be a bigger mess to clear up and it will take a lot longer to dry. So if you're doing these two fingers, just stroke it down and it's hardly any pressure. We're just touching the surface. If I squeeze too hard, you'll see the plaster all comes off on my fingers and the gauze is left with no plaster at all. Can you see that? I'm going to end up with plaster on the carpet at this rate. Hopefully you can see that. So it's a very gentle motion down and down. Let's show you that one more time. So take your plaster, dip it straight in, straight out. Gently bring your fingers down either side. And there you have it. The plaster is still there. There's a lot of plaster in the gauze. It's now moist and ready to go on the body and it's no longer dripping. So it's a lot less mess. So let's quickly jump to the end. Assume your cast is already done and it looks fantastic by the way, good job. And now we have to deal with the sludge. The sludge is the stuff in the bottom of your container. Now it may, depending on how big your container was, if you had a big bucket of water, then your water may still just look like it's low fat milk, but it isn't. That plaster can do some serious damage to your plumbing. So don't pour it down the toilet. Do not pour it down any public drains. Do not pour it down the sink. Don't pour it anywhere. You're gonna to have to throw this sludge away and then recycle the container. There's a couple of techniques you can use. One is a bit more complicated than the other. So let's deal with that one first. You've finished your cast. You are gonna set this aside for a few days. Make sure nobody touches it. Put a note on, do what you need to do. Lock it up. Let the water settle, all the sludge will go to the bottom, the clear water will come to the top, and that clear water can be poured off into the garden. As soon as it starts to go white again though, stop. Let it set for longer, and when it gets to be quite solid, you can squeeze the side of your container or just bash it out, throw away the hard sludge, and then recycle the container. If you are not in a situation where you can leave it safely for that long, then you're actually gonna pour the water and the sludge into the garbage. So a nice tight bag that you can wrap that up in so somebody doesn't get covered in it later on. But whatever you do, pour the sludge and the water into the garbage and then you can recycle the container. Just one more time in case you missed it. Never, ever, ever pour it into any drain, sink, toilet, nothing. Trust me, it's not worth the plumbing bills. Well done for sitting through the preparation part of getting your cast done. Now you can go off and really enjoy the casting process. The next set of tutorials is doing the casting from right at the beginning all the way to the end, step by step, and you will see how it's done. Don't miss out on this set of tutorials do like and subscribe to my channel. That way I can teach you more fun things that are sometimes really messy. Until the next time, take good care. CherylineWebster.com